Hey friends, welcome back to another Fake Nerds Watch, Night at the Museum, starring Ryan Eliopoulos, Brandon T. McClure. Hello. And Ben Magnet. Where's Dracula, you freaking nerd? Just kidding. It is a night at the museum, but it is not at the museum. We're talking about Marvel's Moon Knight. I stole that joke from Twitter, like, you know, everyone steals jokes from Twitter. Uh, hey guys, muchly anticipated Marvel show. You know, every few months we get a new one of these, but I think this one's particularly special for a lot of people because it's a character half the world has never heard of. And those are my favorite. Oh boy, do I gravitate towards characters that nobody knows. It makes me happy. Uh, Cause usually there's a lot more going on. Uh, it's yeah. a little more in depth, a little more mature, uh, whether it's violence or just psychological. And Moon Knight's a character who is both of those. So I'm very curious. Marvel's got the Moon Knight license. They made the TV show. What was your first impressions, my friends, of Marvel's Oscar Isaac's Moon Knight? You know, I really liked the first episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought this was good. I, I'm not as well versed in Moon Knight as I wish I was. I've read the entire Lemire run and I read his The Warren Ellis. Right, He did like six issues, right? Where it was Mr. Knight. Mm -hmm. I read that. Um, so I'm not as well versed as I wish I was. But yeah, I really, I really dug this. I thought this was pretty good. I don't think this is a uh, particularly a character where he's very malleable, where every run uh, tackles his DID and his personalities in very different ways. So he is a character more than I'd say a lot of the other ones were like, you can kind of do what you want. Like this yeah. is definitely a different approach than what I would have done per personally, but I don't think it's a wrong approach. I think it is perfectly suitable for the type of story they're telling with this type of character. What about yeah. you, Ben Jimino? Oh, I was, I had a blast with this episode. Honestly, I was in, I was engaged. I was intrigued. I wanted to know more. And then once we got to, to, to the reveal, the suit reveal of the show, and it goes to the credits, I'm like, I want more. Yeah. I was yeah. really hoping it was one of those those sneaky like of, hey, here's the first two episodes of Moon Knight in the first week. No, it was only the one. So I was like, damn it, I want to watch the next episode. What do you think this is, Obi Wan? I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but because um, going into it, I was talking to some uh, coworkers of mine. And one of them approached me and said the show sucked. And another mm -hmm. approached me and said it was one of the best Marvel shows he's ever seen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting. And I definitely have to agree with the second guy who said it was one of the best Marvel shows. Because out of the gate, it was different. It was engaging. You still don't know everything about what's going on. Not at all. And I love how we're watching it through Steven's eyes instead of Mark's. I mean, we'll probably get into it more in the episode, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, you brought it up. Uh, I want to. I, I kind of want to start there. I really like how they framed the show. We're only ever on Steven's perspective. Whenever it switched to Mark, it cuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really interesting choice, and I I, I liked it. it. It creates the sense of um, confusion that you, you feel the sense of confusion that Steven is feeling. Yes. the The one thing that I will give this first episode lots of credit for is it does kind of like a one division, just throw you right in and doesn't explain anything. Yeah. Um, Specifically with Moon Knight, a guy who has DID, uh, disassoci disassociative identity disorder, that's a lot to unpack. If you've seen the show Doom Patrol, Crazy Jane has something similar. Uh, mm -hmm. I do think that show handles it much better, but we've only had one episode of this show so far. Um, but yeah, tack making Mark, sorry, Mark, making Steven the the protagonist, but also like the vessel of through the audience, he's learning everything as he goes as well, is a very interesting approach. Um, and I think it works because I Moon Knight is such a character where like there's so much going on. Like if you go head first into it with just Mark, I think I think it might be overwhelming. So this slow burn of like it's a mystery and like, oh, is there actually multiple people in this guy's head? Uh, I think it's really fascinating. I think that's the part of the show that works really well. Uh, I like this episode a lot. I think it's pretty yeah. good. Uh, I have no problems with the Moon Knight aspect of the story. I think there's some problem. I think there's some script problems that I'm like, God damn it. They just it they just can't escape the MCU Joss Whedonification of some of the scripts. And yeah. let me tell you, I was really, I knew the show would not be dark daredevil. I knew it was not going to be daredevil. There are aspects of the show that I get the last five minutes rule. It's my favorite part of the episode. It is full. Just like he's dealing with spooky shit. He's talking to himself in a mirror. Uh, it's very well shot. That's the shit I'm into. Mm -hmm. When he's having a conversation, he's like, Oh, you mean avatar? Oh, the anime or the film. I'm like, <laughs> God damn it. like, there was there was so much good shit happening, and then it's like, oh, CMC, we have to bring levity to the situation. I'm like, no, you don't, no, you don't. I, I felt that way too. A, yes, there, I think there's so much good shit, but then like, wake me up, and I'm just like, it's man, this is the MCU, all right. We can't well, just let something simmer. I I, I want to say I like the musical cues. They all quite make a bit. Up, they'll deal with waking up and stuff. Like I I get it. I get that. Yeah, 
I especially like the one in the in the car chase. I I did really enjoy that. Okay. Um, my only issue at this moment is kind of what you touched on with the MCUification. The you know what the Joss Whedonification. That's it's it's the it, quip. Not yeah. everybody has to quip. And that's the thing. That's what made Daredevil so refreshing when it first came out. It, it didn't feel like that. And Moon Knight feels like a script. I don't know if this is the case in Marvel, but I'm starting to believe it is. It feels like a script that they wrote and then someone came in and put in the quips. Yes. And I'm not. I, it, for whatever reason, this was the first time that it felt out of place. And I, I get it. Like, I expect it with Shang-Chi and whatever, and Doctor Strange. Yeah. Like, I get it there. It's it's fine there. And most of the time it works for the character. This is the first time where I felt like, actually, you know what? Your script would have been much better without them. I Because, again, like, I, I really did enjoy this episode. Uh, and I was really fearful. But, like, like I like for the most part, I enjoy the script. And then there's, like, there is, like, the, the one punchline. I'm like... Can we just live in the, in the heaviness that's happening right now? Yeah. Do we have to do this? Like, uh, and that's honestly the only real complaints I have is like this was a pretty mature overall story that just like had some like had some quirky quips and I'm like unnecessary. True. Yeah. Now that you me- now that you mentioned the, the quips because when I first saw the episode I didn't mind the quips I thought it was kind of funny and also I just liked how they mentioned Avatar. They're not even bad jokes, but like not for what they're trying to do in the show. True for, for me for me but, of course. Like the more I think about it, it's. It's um, it's, you're you're absolutely right. It does take away from Levy because here's Stephen in the middle of his museum with Ethan Hawke, um, this prophet who just shows up, I assume from Germany. Crunchy and, feet. Crunchy feet, yeah. And all of his friend and a bunch of people that Stephen knows in the museum work for this guy. They have to oh, the, the scales. It's like, hey, Hydra. It's um, dude. This is a scary. This is like secret society shit right here. You got. You should be scared. Stop quipping about the well, last Airbender. <laughs> I think there is a sense of like, and like the the thing is, it's the how he delivers it is a kind of a person who is scared but not sure how to handle it. Mm-hmm. And I think, and 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 the thing that that bugs me about the Avatar quip is because it works better in a different scene, right? There's the other scene when he's, when he first sees Ethan Hawke's character and he's trying to, he's trying to give him the scarab, but he can't like he physically can't because Mark, that's the same thing happening. And even there's even some levity to it, but it's done better. That's out of of his control though. That's the difference. I think because like Conchu is like taking over his body saying, you literally cannot give this to him or the story can't happen. Yeah. So he's like he's he's free. it's like uh uh what's it called Doctor uh, Strange we, and Spider Man in No Way Home. I was gonna say Weekend at Bernie's playing like a dead oh, guy, but yeah, it's like that physical comedy works for me. It's just yeah. the specific, and I don't I don't want to go on it too much. It's just it's the one joke that really was like, oh, we own Avatar. That's so sad about Avatar. And I'm like, yeah. ah, maybe choose a different movie. Also, maybe that's just the first thing I thought of. Like they had to make that joke. Uh, besides that, like I really liked all the Egyptian stuff. Like I really like all the mythology that they're building. Like Khonshu. Conchu showing up directly in the first episode, I I really like. Guys, I'm not sold on his voice, and I don't know if I ever will be. And that's just mm-hmm. a me thing of reading comics for so many years. Where this, he sounds like he sounds like a mean Gandalf. And when I read Conchu, <laughs> the omnipotent like deity, that's just not what I hear. Yeah. It just it really threw me off the first time. He's like, oh, the idiot's back in control, and I'm like, am I watching Family Guy? Uh, no, it's not egregious, and I yeah. was used to it. Just, I, it's, I get it. Not, yeah. I get it. Like for me, like it, I liked his voice, but like I get it because I have a friend who um, hates Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon because for years he heard H. John Benjamin. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Like it, it's just who you hear when you when you when you read in that comic and when you're so yeah. ingrained in that character, it's hard. It, it, it feels wrong almost. I yeah. think and also this again goes to the scripting of it, though, like. Conchu, like again, like he he is malleable in the way that he's described in the comics, but like just just the way he's talking to to, to Stephen, it's just very personal. And Conchu mm-hmm. is a very detached god using this guy for something, and he's just like, oh, this is fools doing this thing again. And it just felt very, it's like a dude, not a god. Yeah, not it's not even not even like the performance. It's like the script itself. Like I'm supposed to take this god serious, and he's just like throwing out like full baboon and like he sounds like Gandalf to me a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Man, I'm uh, trying not to be negative. I promise. No, I, I know, but conversely, may I just spin it? May I spin what yeah. you just said positively? Yeah. Um, because I liked his, I liked Kanchu's relationship with Stephen. Yeah. Where the kind of uh, we talk about it like um, th- this kind of like begrudging, like he he knows that Mark is his avatar, but he also knows that there are these other people within Mark that don't know what's yes, going yeah. on. So he's like 
so he says he has this bit when he's in the thing. If you if you don't get if you don't take control, I will kill both of you. Yes. Um, and so like I I liked that. Also, I think he's pretty scary when we just see him in like a hallway. I mm-hmm. think that's a really terrifying scene. Oh yeah, that yeah. hallway scene was was terrifying. Yeah, I but love even the scene of, the even the scene before when 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 they're in the apartment and and Mark is talking to Stephen and you just see the the head turn and the mirror. Yeah. That's some. That's actually some pretty good horror. Mm-hmm. All of that stuff I love. Again, like the last five minutes, like once, and I think this is a good bit of comedy. Stephen Grant of the gift shop, give yeah. me the scare. Like that is like like situational. He's not being funny, but it's funny just because the way it sounds. Like yeah. and the thing with the Anubis like monster and like being darkly lit with the eyeball showing. Like all that stuff's great. I wish the, I wish the whole show was going to be that, and I know it's not. I just mm-hmm. know it's not. And that's the thing that I'm just like I have to accept that. Even though this is a more mature show, it's still going to be the briskier MCU thing. And specifically for Moon Knight, I just don't know if I'm going to be fully okay with that. So I'm just going to yeah. have to let it ride and see where it goes. It's I've an heard, interesting. Go ahead. As it's like from what I've heard from all the interviews, because again, I love watching interviews with all the actors and creators. Um, this show has a much smaller budget than the other shows, and it shows, and that really mm-hmm. bums me out. Um, and CJ is not something I get. I get uh, like try not to get too hung up on, but like. I don't know how, how why this show has some like of the worst CGI in any of these Disney shows. Like Moon Knight is a special effects character, and like some of those special effects, and I'm like, you guys are Disney. Why does Morbius have better special effects in the show? Like, what's also, going on? Also, to be fair, you probably shouldn't be using special effects on Moon Knight anyway, because like he's a no, character no. like Batman. That's a whole nother thing of like, why is he an entire CGI construct? That's a yeah. dude wrapping mummy wrap. Like, well, there is a practical suit. We know that because Mark, because um, not Mark. What's the fucking name? Uh, Oscar oh, Isaac name. said that he wore it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just hope it's a situation where it's like they didn't CGI over the whole thing because it looked bad or some reason. You know what I mean? Like right. sometimes that happens. Um, but yeah, like uh, Ben, you watched Swamp Thing with us, right? Didn't you I watch did. that show with us? Like that's a show where like I didn't expect to see Swamp Thing in the very first episode, and like. The thing that I that I will praise this first episode for, unlike a lot of these other shows, it dives right into the villain and the hero right immediately. Oh yeah, like we like we don't have the whole story of of Mark and Stephen, but we know we have aspects of what's going on. The villain is like, here's the villain, here's this plot, and the character, the hero, and the villain are tied intrinsically because like whatever Stephen's doing is tied to this 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 cult stuff. But like, uh, uh, it's so cool that like. It is giving me enough breadcrumbs where I don't feel totally confused, but like I don't know what's going on. Like that's a perfect mystery show. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm worried. Um, I am worried as far as uh, with all the MCU shows because we get to a point where they either start strong or start poorly or whatever, and then they're pretty solid in the middle, and then they dive off completely. Yeah, and I I've stopped believing the right the creators when they're like, yeah, episode four is when it gets crazy. I don't <laughs> believe them ever, ever again. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I hope that we're, I hope that Moon Knight, because again, it did feel different mm-hmm. and it's edited differently. It's, it, it's got a different tone than some of than the other shows specifically. Mm-hmm. And it, it feel, it feel, it felt almost refreshing in it's disconnectedness from the MCU. Yeah. So I am hoping that it doesn't go the same path with the MCU shows, but I am, I am kind of like on, on the same boat as you are, Ryan, where I'm like, I'm I'm here for the ride, but I really hope the ride's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, after all the shows that we've gotten, like, and I know the heights that they can be. And for me, I still think the height is like episode six Loki, where like that is a payoff that I think does work with a villain. Yeah. Um, but again, this is the situation where like our villain, like we know more about our villain than our hero at this point in the first episode. Like his whole thing is laid out. Like, yo, we're Egyptian minority report. We're killing people before before they do crimes, right? That's the idea. You got to stop me. I'm like, cool. Like we have five more episodes though. We so, still like, technically got... haven't met our hero. Technically, yeah, and that's that's what's gonna be interesting. I think like we're gonna learn more about both these characters over time. And that is interesting because like Arthur Harrow from the comics, he's a one issue off off character. Excuse um me. so they're doing something very different. Like they say he's not any other character from the comics. He is like he is an amalgamation new thing. And from this first episode, it does seem that way. Um and I'm curious why there are a lot of great Moon Knight villains, but that's besides the point. Um Ethan Hawk's cool. Like, I won't say he's, like, destroying it, but, like, he's a good menacing guy. I need more to see, like, what, what his whole deal is. But, like, I'm enjoying does, it. What the, I feel like Ethan Hawke does very well is that he gives off the, I'm a holy man, but also I'm a holy man who's ain't afraid to kill you vibe. 
Yeah, I yeah. mean, our, we see it obviously where he's where he judges the one dude and goes, "This is the face of a good man." And then the old woman comes up and she and she's deemed unworthy and it's like, "Hey, you're gonna do some bad shit." Lay down. She's, like, she's like eighty. That's unfair. Yeah, it's like no, so you, you gotta die right now. And then she, she dies, and he's like, "Oh well, he does." He, it, to him, uh, what's what's the phrase? To him, necessary casualties have to happen. Yeah. Uh, there's a fun bit of comedy in the scene that you're describing, Ben, that I really liked where it was where he, where he says something in Egyptian and everyone kneels and Steven's like, Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh bollocks. <laughs> yeah. And I thought I, that was I pretty do, funny. Yeah. I do kind of like Oscar Isaac's British accent. It is kind of funny. I think it's when you, the trailers don't do it justice because it is a like Cockney, like, Oh, I governor. But, but that does exist. It is just yeah. kind of like, it is it is the the stereotypical American thing to, like, to make fun of. But like that accent does exist. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. And like they've said in interviews, like they didn't want, they didn't want, uh, Stephen Grant in the comics is a multi-millionaire who lives in, living in Los Angeles. Like he's like a movie producer, right? Like they didn't want to do the Bruce Wayne comparisons. I think that's bullshit. He's not even, he's not, just because he's rich doesn't mean he's like Batman in any way whatsoever. But I get it. They wanted to make him a guy from London, even though they're not even shooting in London, they're shooting in Budapest. Which I think is just really funny because you can't shoot in location because it's too expensive. Yeah. Uh, but like making the changes to to a Londony Stephen Grant is fine. Just throwing away that one aspect of the character is interesting because like Moon Knight is a guy who has wealth and he has like he does have gadgets. So mm -hmm. being a little more street level at first is a decent approach. I ain't mad at it. It's well, a cool they, idea. They've done so. You've read more Moon Knight than I have. He's not, as far as I know, he doesn't have like superpowers, right? it depends entirely on the run okay 100%. well because we've seen in the trailer how he takes his moon his moon rings out of his chest yes and it's like that's not from the comics is it um i don't think so no it is kind of like like batman's crest thing being new as well so yeah been, like that is a relatively new thing like again it depends on the run like i'm really curious what direction they're going to take with Conchu. Because in the mm -hmm. comics, either Kanchu is real and he is like in another dimension, or it is all part of Mark's personality. They have all they have done every aspect of whether he's real or not, right? Mm -hmm. I think they're just gonna do like he is like some primordial demon thing in another dimension or whatever, giving him power. I don't think it's gonna be all in Mark's head because <laughs> that would be way too personal and way too cool. And the MCU really wants to expand the the mythology and supernatural stuff, right? Yeah, Kanchu is yeah. gonna be a real figure. Kanchu is gonna be a real Egyptian god. Uh, yeah. because like because they're they're pairing it up like Amonet, who is uh who is um who has made crocodile. crocodile lady who has made what's her ethan hawk um yeah. his he that's his that's her avatar and so like they like he talks about it like you know the moon god and the the life god or whatever they yeah. they were at odds like that's what we're seeing now in like a street level is like those you know gods really really god. makes me worried here as well uh they give him a scarab a little scarab and this is how he, that's how he gets his Moon Knight powers from Kanchu. Uh, similar thing they're doing with Miss Marvel, giving mm. her something to give her powers. Ethan Hawke is going to be the avatar of Amet. I swear to God, if he just turns into an evil Moon Knight at the end and he fights Moon Knight, I'm going to be so pissed. <laughs> I'm going to be so pissed. Because how many times do we have to have a character fighting the same character, just the evil version of them? Because like, boy howdy, I'm going to be disappointed if it's just a darker Moon Knight. Well, I, don't, well, I really hope that's not it. But what if he turns into a giant crocodile at the end of it? That's great. Awesome. <laughs> Make sure the CGI looks great, though. <laughs> I'm be into that. Because he's talking about, like, uh, uh, like av I avatars of a man have, like, have, like uh, betrayed her or whatever. And, like, he's, like, better. And, like, I'm just worried that it's just going to be a CGI Moon Knight fight, like, like Black Panther fight or, like, a Wonder Woman fight. And it's like, I oh, that's, that's not what it should be. <laughs> that's not the point. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you, you kind of run into this issue all the time with, with – uh, comic book adaptations i i know you you like to tweet about it recently where they talked about what the trope is it's like the 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 rival or something yeah. um where you know morbius did it recently um uh, none of us saw morbius but like that's what um that's did you see morbius you saw morbius i saw morbius last night really I was, we'll talk about it later going, i was going to and i didn't we'll talk about it later um yeah, but like that's what choice. But that's what what that but that is and it's been and it's and it's often used in 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 marvel and it's was used early on in Marvel movies and, and they, they did go away from that and to, they're kind of going back to that in phase four. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, okay, maybe, maybe there's still some stuff to be mined with, with it, but I'm kind of with you. Like, I don't think that Moon Knight who does have a wealth of villains needs to be fighting a, a new character. That's just a dark Moon Knight. And, and I, and I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but like, 
even the Moonlight comics you've read, like he's fighting like ghosts and like mm -hmm. Mushroom Man, and like he is a supernatural, or he can be grounded, but also like if you lean into it, he can be like the most supernatural character around. Like hey, again, he's messing with Dracula. That's a fake panel of Give Me Money, but that's a real panel of him actually having to fight Dracula. Like yeah. he hangs out, he's part of the mid, he hangs out with like Midnight Sun stuff. He's not part of them, but like you know what I mean. Like I, I just, I am so, I want them to go in a direction, and I know they're not, and I'm just like, because I know I got Blade coming too. You know what's funny? Real quick, Morbius is part of the Midnight Suns, but now like Moon Knight is like the supernatural guy, and like Morbius is like I'm like, oh, it's like it's so weird. Comics are weird. Black <laughs> thing is weird. Um, Black yeah, Knight, I, now now Midnight Sun. I would like to see. I would I would like to see it go in a different direction, perhaps a more cerebral direction. And I know mm -hmm. that the that the writers and directors of the show do seem at least interested in that, whether they've whether they have successfully done it is another thing entirely. Yes. Um, I just, I do. I just don't think that Ethan Hawke would have signed on if they were like, we're going to give you a costume and, and be an evil version of Moon Knight, you know, like so, he's not that kind of actor. No, I agree. And like, uh, I specifically have been watching so many Ethan Hawke interviews. Cause he's a guy who famously was like, I don't, I don't like superhero stuff. Yeah. And all the interviews he's saying, he's like, I didn't, I didn't look at this as a superhero thing. Oscar Isaac came to me saying, hey, I'm interested in this project. Would you want to be the villain in it? And then I read the script and I thought it was cool. Um, and it is a self-contained thing. It is, as far as we know, there isn't much MCU stuff in it. Maybe at the end, it'll get crazy. Who knows? Yeah, um, and they're not I, even contractually obligated to do more. This is it. Yes. That is also kind of scary. Because like it could be like, I, I, I'm not worried that Oscar Isaac isn't going to show up again, but it could be a situation where like, I did my one and done and I'm happy. And I'm like, well, that's also a bummer. Yeah. Uh, but that's not that's a tough point. But if it's good, would you be happy with just a good six issue six six uh uh episode yeah, event episode. series? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but just like how the MCU works and how they ingrain everything, I don't see they would they would have to take out all of the MCU stuff and just make a standalone thing. Mm -hmm. But it's but it, I think it is still gonna be tied in somehow. Um, I'm sure it will. I'm sure we'll yeah. I, honestly I think we see Blade in the show personally. Oh yeah. I'm um, I'm convinced. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing he said, most people say episode four, um, the, the director said that episodes one and five are kind of like the big ones for this, for this season. Yeah. Where episode five is like, things go crazy. Uh, the thing that I want to talk about, um, the marketing. So if you guys, we all have watched all the trailers cause you know, uh, we're nerds and we do a podcast and stuff. So like this first episode didn't really have a lot of new stuff. If you've watched all those trailers and that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. That makes me even more excited because that means that there's so much footage that we haven't seen because most of it was from the first episode. And that's mm -hmm. what makes me the most excited because the way Oscar Isaac and Ethan all talk about the show, they they really think they they think they did the job of doing the DID stuff uh, uh, justice. And I think they've done it okay so far. If it stays like this, I will disagree with that. I don't think they've done it justice. I think the date stuff is bad. I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't think it's good. Real mm. quick. No, I got to talk about it. If if he asked this woman on a date, okay, Stephen, Stephen Knight, right? That's his name, Stephen Grant? Stephen Grant. Stephen Grant. He doesn't remember asking this woman out on a date, right? It's because Mark did it. Mark did it. You're telling me this woman comes, comes to talk to this guy who now looks different, sounds different, completely different persona, and she just accepts it without going, you sound different? I don't entirely disagree with what you're saying. Because th um, that's the part where, like, this this was all to make, oh, it's sad that he can't get his dates right. Even though all of us have iPhones, he has an iPhone. The first thing you see on your iPhone is the date and the time. Yeah. It's just, I think that romance subplot, because that character's probably not going to show up again, I think that was 10 minutes they could have used for something else. I really do. I think that is, like, oh, he can't get his dates mixed. He gets his dates mixed up. But I'm like, like that's, I think that's not, I think that's, that's, uh what's, like, cheesy and, like, trophy. I will not lie. When he wakes up in Germany, I'm like, oh, he's going to miss his date, isn't he? And then yeah. when he finally gets back home, it's like, dude, check your phone. Check what Definitely, day like, is it's it? It's not 1975. Like, <laughs> he, he opens his phone all the time. It's on I mean, there. I get that he does, he freaks out over Gus missing, not magically regrowing his fin. But then it's like, dude, what day is it? Is it Friday? Because if, if it's you Friday, out, you're screwed. If you took out the date stuff and left the goldfish stuff in, that makes sense to me. That's okay. I'm I right. hear you. I hear both of you. Yeah. I don't disagree either. Mm -hmm. But I liked it. Okay, um fine. I thought it was, I thought it was handled pretty well and I, I look I have a different mental health disorder I don't suffer from DID so I can't I can't speak on it um, but I do like uh, the idea I, I did like how they tackled the idea that he's 
You know, it starts with, I'm just always tired because it feels like I'm not actually sleeping because he's not when he yeah. goes to bed, Mark takes over. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, and then that kind of manifests in, into, it's starting to become, I'm actually losing time because Mark is taking over and he doesn't know that he has DID. Steven yeah. doesn't know that he has DID. So he, he, he's calling his mom. He's taking care of his goldfish. He has no idea that someone else is in his body. Calling his mom. Right. Calling his mom. Yeah. And like, uh, and it, who's probably not real. Um, Definitely not. <laughs> right. And so like, he's not the dominant personality. Mark is, we're following the secondary personality. So I liked, I liked seeing Steven slowly come to the realization that what he's, that what, that there is someone else taking over his body and kind of losing that. Emo and like seeing that emotion come from him. I think it, I like that scene because of the emotion that Oscar Isaac brings to it being heartbroken. That it's like, yes, I'm losing time. Yes. So, okay. So that is where I will give you. Oscar Isaac is selling everything. Where yeah. I have shortcomings with the script, he is selling it 100%. I think the, the 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 scripting with, what kind of steak do you want? I want a steak. How well? I want a real good. I think that's bad dialogue. He sells it really well. Mm -hmm. That is a good scene of Oscar Isaac. I think that scene still could have been used differently, but I do like the emotion behind it. I just think it's executed like, it's just more silly. It's just silly when I wish they would just lean into like how sad it really is. And that's, well, I that's think, a thing. But I think... There. I think they did. Okay. Um, personally. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. But that's not, we don't need to, we don't no, need yeah, to stress that. Yeah. Um, I, I, the, because you talk about it, I really like Oscar Isaac in this role. I think he's very good in this he's first episode. Good. Absolutely. And like the, only, the, the, the two minutes you see of Mark, uh, again, that final five minutes, uh, and the way that they shot, again, this, this, this show had, the director doesn't say it, but the way he talks about how low the budget was, it's like, why did you even make the show if you're not going to give it the money it needs? Hmm. But the way the way he talked about it, filming it like almost like uh, just like old school indie film, where like in that in that bathroom when he's talking to Mark, uh, that that's just all in camera. There's no special effects. It's just they obviously they put the the scene like into the mirror. Yeah. But like there is no he is in the same shot. He's like, okay, do Mark. Okay, now do Steven. Okay, now do Mark and now do Steven. And Oscar Isaac is just for 18 hours having to be two different people losing his mind. And that's so well shot. It's yes. so, the the final five minutes are so well shot. I was looking at it and it feels like an old monster movie. Like they're hiding the monster so that we're not so quite seeing him. And then when 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 Mark shows up and he's trying to talk to him and you see him through the mirror, how that's going, you see the you see the camera panning through and then it goes back because Mark's going back to the door. All good stuff. I was really into how that was shot. Absolutely. And like, oh, yeah. like the, the, that final line of like, you need to let us save you. Let me do this. Yeah. And it's like, that's, that's so cool. It's, it, it's like Mark Spector is like a hard ass mercenary. That's the first time. Cause he hasn't been explored a lot, obviously, but like, I'm like, Oh, this guy is serious. And like Oscar Isaac is really nailing it. Like, yo man, I'm intense. Let me show you how I'm so intense. I'm Moon Knight. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want the whole show to be like that. Uh, uh, and there's just going to be some like fluffy goodness around it, which is going to be fine. I'll, I'll we'll learn to accept it. Uh, I just wish we lived in a world where like Moon Knight's hard. You guys, Moon Knight is so hard. He is, he he'll kill people. He don't give a F. He doesn't even know what he'll do. It's so great. And like, I have, I have, I'm cautiously optimistic. I will say that I am more optimistic than not. Um, specifically with like this Egyptian director, this guy who comes from like small indie shit and like he really believed in this project and wanted to have the mental health issues. I just worry every time that like Disney interferes with his true vision. That's where yeah. I'm always coming out with these things. And There's specifically with Moon Knight, he's not a character who's just like, you just throw away to me. Yeah. Like not, not, and no characters throw away, right? Like, but this character specifically deals with stuff that no other character deals with. And if you just do it, if you don't do it right, people will just forget about it. And they're like, oh, we're never going to try it ever again. There is also the sense of you, the director can have the best of intentions, but miss the mark. Absolutely. No yeah. pun intended. Um, but like, I think that like, you know, DID is a really difficult subject to tackle. Um, and to do it through the MCU lens is an even more difficult task. And so if yeah. he, if he had the best of intentions, if he went in there being like, I want to do this right. And even if it's not the MCU, even if it's not Disney being like, no, no, tone it down, tone it down he could still just not be the person to tackle this, even if he wants to be. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? And, and again, judging from this first episode, I hope even if it's not like egregiously bad, like if the fine scene, I don't want all of his DID stuff to just to be, Oh, I got, I missed a date. Cause it's, mm -hmm. there, there's so much more depth than just like, than it's like a booty call. Some girl who's like, never call me again. Bye. I'm like, I don't, that's not what I want to see in a moon night show. If I'm being honest, yeah. like, but that's, that's, 
different shows for different folks. Um, um, man, I, uh, I, I am just Layla, Layla, the character who's going to show up soon. There is no Layla in Moon Knight comics. The only Layla is an X Men character, and it's definitely not her. Uh, so I'm very curious what what she's going to be all about. Because what if it was like what if that weird world where we lived in, where they introduced an X Men character in a Moon Knight show? Specifically, Layla Miller. She is like one of the most insane, like retconned X Men characters. Like she, her power is she knows everything. Mm-hmm. And the writers take with that what they will, for better or for worse. She, that's sure. her power. She knows stuff. Uh, I doubt it's that character because that'd be insanely funny. But uh, they did bring in 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 like a Middle Eastern actress uh, to play this character, and I think it's cool that like the thing that I'm most excited about is like. We haven't seen a lot of it yet, but they're going to be diving into real heavy like Egyptian mythology and like with real Egyptian and like, Middle Eastern actors that we haven't seen yet. And yeah. that's the stuff I'm really excited about. More Egyptian stuff, like more like getting to like if we're going to do Moon Knight mythology and Khonshu, let's go hard, baby. And the trailers allude to that. Like we see we see Mark Spector in like the temples and stuff. So like I'm so excited for that stuff. I can't wait to see that stuff. That's what I'm really waiting for. Um, we talked about about when he's in when he's in the the, the foreign state. Um, that's unnamed, I believe. Um, he the 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 scarab sequence um, when he's when he's trying to when he's trying to give Ethan Hawke the scarab, but he mm-hmm. he can't. The music there is really hard and kind of terrifying, showing you like the like the 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 the, the humor of the scene is being drowned out by, by the music, which is good because like yeah. it could be very humorous, but the music is like no, this is actually very scary for both Stephen. Uh, for for Steven, because this guy's going to kill him. Mm-hmm. He thinks so. And I thought that that was pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. I also really like the chase scene. The the car chase scene, I think that's really well done. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I hope uh, that the the cutting away and missing the action isn't going to be a thing that happens all the time. Because I think, I we're, like I think we're losing it. I hope so, because I like yeah. it twice. If it, happens, if it happened a third time, I would have went, can I see some action in the show? Yeah, I like, like I like fine. it for the first episode. I'm yeah. th- I think we're moving away because now we're going to see Mark. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, first episode works because that leads up to the reveal of Moon Knight, like in the suit Moon Knight, and then it's like, cool, we're gonna this is the guy we're gonna see for the rest of the show, Rat. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna actually see some action because I do agree. There are times where I was watching this where I do like how I'm watching this through Steven's perspective, and he's and he's blacking out. He and the next thing you know is he's holding a gun in his hand. He's driving this cupcake truck and he's about to hit a, a truck full of logs. And he, or when, like when he woke up in the field and his jaw was misplaced. Broken. Yeah. It was like, Ooh, you know what? I just, I just, I actually do think we are going to see, I think we're going to get flashbacks through Mark's perspective when those events are happening. Because in the trailers, you see him falling from the cliff, turning into moon Knight. Oh. And we didn't see that in this episode. So I think we're mm-hmm. going to see what happens in those blackouts. So I might retroactively even feel better about it because it'll be like, here's how I saved your ass multiple times. Yeah. I, I like, yeah. As the first episode, I like how it's edited because going back to what I said in the beginning, like I like that we we whenever we cut to Mark's perspective, it just cuts and we'd go back to Steve's perf- perspective and everything's different. I think that's all really well handled. I just think it's re- it's it's important to do that for the first episode of what they're doing. It's not important to keep doing it. Yeah. Um, and I the do only, think that we're going to move away from that. The only reason I bring it up is because, again, like the director talked about how the only reason that they did that is for budget reasons. Mm. So they were going to shoot all that shit. And then for budget reasons, and, and he said it, it ended up being better for the story. But initially they were going to be shot. So yeah. I'm curious if if it's something that they did shoot or it is or everything that I want is not going to happen. But we'll see. Well, yeah. I. I if if that's the case, then this being then this having a lower budget to me has so far it been works. a net positive. Yeah, but again, besides some like just like really dodgy car special effects for again, I don't know why it's so bad. Uh, oh, it's because like, they can't really crash a car. Well, come on, but I've seen this, they were the MCU is like, not going to do it. AMC is not what the MCU is oh, not yeah, going to yeah. crash a car. I'm just saying, like that that log truck and those logs look very bad. I didn't think they looked any worse than anything else I've seen in the MCU, but I oh. I agree that like they are they are they, they are CGI. They're obviously CGI. Yeah. Just exactly. I I've stopped. T- truthfully, I've stopped caring. I uh, to me to me the story is all that matters. And if you got some wonky CGI, sometimes oh well. That's a good point. The only thing the reason I bring it up is Disney has a quality barrier that they normally hit, and when they don't, it usually means that they're being rushed or they don't give them the, the things that they need. Yeah. And specifically, when you're throwing hundreds of millions of dollars at movies and TV shows, when 
lesser products look better than it. I'm just going, why aren't you giving it the resources that it deserves? That's what I mean. Well, I but CGI, like it doesn't bother, like it doesn't take it away from the story, but Disney's quality, like, oh, we don't care that CGI isn't better. That's you're I mean. you're absolutely right because you you touched on something, you touched on the reason why I stopped caring. Because Disney is not going to give them the resources they need. They're just not. They don't care about CGI people. The people yeah. who work on CGI, they could not give to let they could they could not give two shits about the people who do the CG. To them, they're just part of the bottom line. And that's a bigger problem mm -hmm. with the CG industry that yeah. a lot of studios, I mean, we do know that a lot of independent studios and a lot of even some, even the people like Warner Brothers or Universal, they still give those CG, those CG people the time that they need. But we know that there is rampant crunch, there is rampant uh, abuse in the CG industry that creates shots like that scene. And, and to me, the reason why it doesn't bug me when I'm watching something like Moon Knight is because I'm always more concerned about the macro situation of, well, yeah, I know why it's like that, and I wish it would change, but that's a macro level thing, not not a so Moon Knight's a symptom of the problem. Yeah, no, I you get know? you. Yeah, but that's uh, a whole I other also, topic. I also just think, like, again, like if your if your main character, I'll, I'll forgive a log. Yeah, if your main character CGI doesn't look great, that's when I have the issue. That's why I have an issue with Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it just they have so much money. Like they don't. Man, Ben, you are falling asleep, my guy. <laughs> you should take a nap after this. Um, <laughs> do we have any closing, closing? Well, let me let me let me go through my notes real quickly because I, I I did take some notes. I'm trying to be better about note taking for our figure swatches. Yeah. Honest um, to God. Also, honest to God, I'm trying not to fall asleep. I don't know why. Well, no, we can tell. Well, I'm, 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 I'm and I really enjoy. I'm really enjoying listening to this conversation because you guys are bringing up some good points. Because the I didn't really notice the whole CGI log thing, except as like eh, it could have looked better. Yeah. I mean, but that's yeah. Again, that's the larger issue. That's of just what like, it is. Like it, the CGI. It that's the problem. It, yeah. The the Disney Disney needs better practices when it comes to their 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 uh, when their CGI houses. And I, God, I really hope they unionize soon because they yeah. they fucking need to. Nah, dog. Um, uh, the music is great. I really like the music. Yeah, music is really good. That's definitely an, a, a note that I had. I really like the music. By the way, the end title sequence is the same people who did the Black Panther end title sequence, and that's really cool. I think those it look is, really it's great. Pretty sick. It is pretty sick. Um, I'll show you Oscar Isaac. I like how it's edited. Yeah. Stay no, late. I, oh, um, I a hundred percent think, and I'm not going to tell you who they are. I'm a hundred percent convinced that, um some of Moon Knight's uh, uh, friends that are in the comics, we've already seen in the show and they're hidden as other characters. Oh, I've, I've seen, I think I know who you're talking about. Uh, I think there's two. I'll tell you one, the golden guy, I'm pretty sure yeah. the golden, the golden statue guy is one of his friends from the comics. Uh, that's like keeping an eye out on him. Um, and then another one, I'll keep the secret. Yeah, I, I, I got the golden guy. Um, Cause he's in Lemire's run for a bit. Yeah, Crowley, he's an old crazy yeah. old man. Um, yeah. I want to put a button on the CGI on the CGI thing because like it, it CGI is such a such a, the 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 work the CGI workers um, are so important to me because they are they, without them the movies that we have now wouldn't look like they do. That's why I bring them up because they and, deserve better. And I just while it doesn't bug me when I see a, uh, when I see something in in something in like a, a Marvel MCU TV show because at the end of the day, story matters. It it is still it is still something that I am always willing to have the larger conversation of like, you know, they need to unionize. They, they need to have better practices. They need to get to, we need to get to the point where we are not abusing these people uh, because it is getting, it is only getting worse. Yeah. And, and I hope, and like Disney it's specifically with Disney, because you see it getting better with other, with other studios being like, no, we'll give you the time that you need. We'll give you what you need. But like Disney is constantly getting worse about it because they're more concerned with hitting those release dates than everyone else is in, in the industry. True. They, yeah. I mean, besides like, I was gonna say they don't delay, but no, they, they, they do delay stuff. Black Widow never came out. Not as often as they should though. Not as often as they should. No. Uh, I mean like, no, yeah, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Cause like, I just yeah. think like WandaVision and WandaVision had like spectacular CGI. Like spectacular and i like that was that was like the first show but wasn't even the first show it was technically the second show from falcon and winter soldier it's yeah. just like the barrier seems to be going lower and i'm like that's not how it should be it should be higher uh i like this episode a lot i am cautiously optimistic um they're just showing mr knight as a promo image on disney plus so mm -hmm. i'm like wow they're just they don't even give a shit cool 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 i guess uh very curious how he shows up the way they're the way that they're handling it it seems like he might be another personality that's not 
Mark or or Steven? Yes, I was actually going to ask you about that because I, as as I as I know Moon Knight, the character of Mr. Knight and Moon Knight aren't personalities, they're they're costumed vigilantes yeah. that they put yeah, on. Yeah. And so, what we're what the theoretically what we're seeing is that Moon Knight and Mr. Knight are separate personalities now yeah. in the show. Yeah, so so in the comics like Mark Spector is a dude and then he has multiple personalities. He's also a superhero. They're not together. Yeah. He's, he has his own mental issues. He's also a superhero and that's all wrapped up. Uh, certain runs deal with it differently where it's like more in tide and more not. This one, I'm not sure. I don't know the direction they're going. I think it's too early to tell. Yeah. Uh, but but I'm, I'm ultimately, excited. I think it's a solid episode. I like yeah. it. I'm, I'm intrigued to know. I'm intrigued to where it's going to go. I like how unique it feels. Yeah. Um, and I, I hope it continues to be because I would love to have I would love nothing more than an MCU show to just every week knock it out of the park. Me too. Yeah. We I feel like we that I feel like ever since Disney said, hey, we're gonna put a bunch of cool new shows up on Disney Plus, they're gonna be part of the MCU. It's like you guys should be knocking out of the park every single week and you have it. Well this one this one did. This one I feel like did maybe just barely knocked it out of the park. But it's it a was, learning. It, what they what they've had to, what they've had to struggle with is a learning curve. Marvel Studios is not a television is not a television studio; they're a movie studio, and so they've right. had to deal with the learning curve. Eventually, that's going to stop being an excuse. Yep. Eventually, yeah. Like, what is this the the fifth the fifth show? Yeah, fifth show? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I like yeah. It, it does it does feel different enough where I'm like, okay, thank God. Um, yeah, I, I, I am excited. I'm excited. I I I was. I want to watch the next episode, and that's that's as that's as hopeful as I can be. I'm like, I am excited yeah. for more because I was really worried. I'm just gonna be like, oh, another Marvel thing. I, I was hoping I, that, I fucking love. Yeah, <laughs> I was hoping that. I mean, I was also glad that this is a lot better than I thought because I was like, man, it would suck that it was just like, eh, it's fine. Because again, and like also Oscar Isaac, like it, let's let's if this was bad, and then he'd just be done and be like, man, it's another Disney thing. He's just like, I'm out of Disney. Fuck Disney. I'm like, yeah. I know Oscar, you're too good. No, he really is. He, he's, I thought he was, yeah, he's, he sells the really show good. so hard. I he love, does. Love him. Yeah, he does. And also, like we said earlier, this is one of Marvel's most lesser known characters. Not, I mean, yeah, sure, Iron Man, but back in 2008, he wasn't much of a household name. Now everyone knows who the hell Iron Man is. No. Whereas this is one of the things that Marvel and Disney plus should be doing is like, let's bring more of our lesser known characters into the limelight. Let's show them how awesome these characters are. Moon Knight being one of those characters, right? Moon I mean, Knight. yes, we're get you miss Marvel and she Hulk later down the line, but it's like, we already had the big ones. Cap, uh, Fa- almost said Captain America, Falcon, the winter soldier, AKA Captain America, the winter soldier. We had WandaVision. We had Loki already household names. Wanda, we know these character. people. Huh? I'm saying Wanda, big character. <laughs> Well, I mean, but that's the thing. That's the thing that the MCU has been struggling with with their television shows. That I I feel anyway, and 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 I we should, we should probably get out of here soon. But I just want to finish up yeah. by saying that like, um, one of the things that I always appreciated with Marvel throughout Phase One, Two, and Three was that they never apologized for their characters. They said we're going to bring the character and show you why they're cool, and mm-hmm. and that's the attitude that I was going into Phase Four with. And going into the second year of phase four, I'm starting to worry that that is no longer the case. Yeah. And I don't want to feel that with Moon Knight because as even though I have not read a lot of Moon Knight, I've always really liked Moon Knight. I've always been fascinated by that character. And I'm and I'm currently reading the Bendis Maliv run now. Um, so like I'm going I'm going to fill my gaps. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want that. to. I don't want this to be the case that Moon Knight becomes another. Well, it wasn't a character that we thought would work. So we changed it. I don't want that. And I don't think that is I, going f- yeah. from the first episode. I don't think that is the case. The I mean, thing is, they, like, the thing about Moon Knight is he's not a four quadrants character. Yes, that's he's true. not a character for everyone. And like, D- they're, Disney's going to try to make him for everyone, and they're going to try real hard. And this first episode, I think, is a success. But like, I I just don't know if the depth is going to be there with Disney. And we'll yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. We'll yeah, we'll see. I mean, thank God for Marvel Unlimited having all those Moon Knight comics on there. Otherwise, if we went to WonderCon this weekend, I'd be buying a crap ton of Moon Knight books. Oh man! Like, also, yeah. If you man, the, the comics have never been so good. The the Jed McKay run right now is stupid good. Uh, there are so many. There's been very. There's been almost no bad Moon Knight comics because again, he's a character who has a run every couple of years, and they're like, hey, we got a good writer. I'm like, hell yeah. I'm reading yeah. the Jed McKay it's one awesome. as well. I've been picking it up. Say that again. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
it's sensational. The art's incredible. Swamp yeah. Thing got a TV show before Moon Knight. That's when I knew shit was whack. Because <laughs> I'm like, wow, like you think Moon Knight's obscure? Talk about this plant man over here. And he got a TV show. That show got canceled before it even came out. Talk about that. <laughs> God, still yeah, better that. about that. All right. Well, why don't we call it there then? Moon Knight. Uh, Glad you're good, buddy. Please stay that way. Yeah. Next uh, next time Sparks will be will be, will join us. He couldn't make it this time. Oh um, yes. Sparks isn't here <laughs> because he's uh, uh he's working on some stuff back in his hometown. But he'll be he'll be you'll have seen him when we're recording this. It'll be tonight, but uh, this this past week where we have talked about we we've done our first ever on the Fickner podcast, our first ever Fickner awards. Um, we're doing we're doing an award show. Uh, we've done an award show. It's weird doing this part. Um, <laughs> On the Fickner podcast, we go live every Sundays. This past week, we did an award show. It was a lot of fun, I'm sure. And then coming up, we're doing Sonic the Hedgehog. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, Ryan has and bubbles. Ryan does have bubbles. And then you can uh, check out some of the other shows that we have on this channel. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. You can check out Fickner's Watch. Uh, we got tons of Fickner's Watch shows. This is Moon Knight. We're probably going to be keeping up this, this weekly as long as it doesn't disappoint us. Too bad. Um, <laughs> And then uh, I'm going. I'm doing weekly shows for Star Trek Picard. Um, so there's two Fickner's watches going. Star Trek Picard. Brandon, I just watched the new Strange New Worlds trailer that came out today. Oh, yeah. me too. I might watch that show. It looks very good. Me too. If that that there's no way that show is as good as that trailer is. That trailer was so good. Yeah, I put that in our trailers because I was like, wow. this is very good. Yeah. Good. I want to talk about that trailer. I want to I'm watch so it. I'm so happy to hear that from you guys. Starship Picard has been really good and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, the last couple of episodes have been with Cookie um, from Just a Little Podcast. That's been a lot of fun. You can check those out right now. The latest episode just went up um, at the time of this recording. Um, so you can find that. And uh, yeah, okay. So check out some of our other shows on this channel, such as Basement Arcade. Um, Basement Arcade Pause Menu, which just won an award, which we will talk about, which we have talked about on the Fakner Podcast episode that just aired. Um, Animation Station and Fickner Book Club are all shows that you can find on this channel. Again, like this video, subscribe to this channel. You get tons of cool stuff. We put out a lot of stuff. We're really proud of it all. Um, yeah. I'm at BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter. Wait, no. You can find the socials, Fickner Podcast, on all the social medias. We have a Patreon. We have a Public. You can find all that. That's linked below. I'm at BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter. I also write for Atomic Geekdom, Kaiju Ramen, and Screen Rant. Ben. You can find me on the internet at benmagnet27 on Instagram and Twitter mostly. You can also find me writing for Gamer Magazine. Go get it. Gamer Magazine. My God, I do need that nap. Fusion Gaming Magazine. Go Nintendo.com and Old School Gamer Magazine. Ryan. You can find me doing nothing at all <laughs> at DJ Tony Snark. Well, that's, that's a lie. lie. You can, too much Elden Ring. That's a lie. You can find I'm becoming the Elden Lord. Oh, yeah, I'm close. I'm pretty close. All right, until next time you see us, stay fake nerds.